Welcome to a special day after the election edition of Sounding Board. Hi Andy. Hi. Hi. So, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, we only recorded a couple of days ago where we talked a lot about the polls, but the only poll that matters is now in and Boris has his fairly sizable majority. Relieved? Uh, yes, yeah, so in, initial reactions are um, relieved that we're not communists. Yay. Which, which we could have been. So, that, you know, always looking on the, on the bright side, you know. Um, I think, so the pound is skyrocketing at the moment. Yeah, um, I, posted, I posted a graph of that as yeah. soon as the, um, I mean, it was the exit poll was in. The exit poll, again, has been very accurate. I got the SMP number of seats a bit wrong. He said they were going to have like 55 and they got 48. Um, so in terms of the percentage to the number of seats. So that's don't forget that the SMP seats are very, very, they're all very, very marginal. Yes. So it's, yeah, it's easy to get. It's it, easy it, to exactly. Get. Um, the, pound, the pound was rocketing like, like Bitcoin was a couple of, a couple of years. It's highest to um, three years or something. Yeah. And the, the, the rise is, is, is incredible. Um, yeah. It just shows that. Uh, so, so the possibility is, is better. Yeah, so before we get into kind of our, our commentary on it then and your opinions on it, other than just being, other than waking up and feeling a, a bit relieved. Well, so last night when I looked at the exit poll, it was, you know. It, it, yeah, pour yourself a glass or something. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but we'll come on to why that doesn't mean we think the Conservative government is. Uh, we're, we're living yeah, in it's least worst territory. Least yeah. worst territory. Um, so I'm going to rattle through a few statistics. I've, I've quickly noted down um, a load of stuff. Just so, this is for posterity more than yeah. anything. Um, but just, just before you start, so did you know, yeah. so yes, so obviously today is Friday the 13th. Yep. Um, and yesterday was the 12th of the 12th. And you, if you add up 2019, that adds up to 12. So it was apparently spiritually, it was this, <laughs> it was this kind of, you know, it was this date of the 12th, oh, 12th, right. 12th. It was a full moon. Um, but all these, <laughs> all these things. Are these, are, these all, are these all reasons that the, the left are saying? That they lost it or something or what? Or uh, no, it's just I've, 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 I've kind of heard this, um, uh, you know, before that it was this, you know, it's just this right. special date. Um, okay, um, this amuses me. Okay, so this is UK Parliament, the UK House of Commons, six hundred and fifty seats. All of them are up for grabs. This isn't like in the US where um, you know certain certain bits of you know a third goes each time or anything like that. No, this is everything. Um, so because six hundred fifty seats. You need a majority, 326, half plus one, um, to, to get your majority. Um, there's, a, there's a few numbers you take off that because you've got Speaker and Deputy Speaker, you've got Sinn Féin and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's kind of what we're shooting for. Uh, I'm going to rattle through the Conservative and Labour and SP and all that, their, their vote share and their number of seats. Um, right now, so we're recording this just after midday. It's about 25 to 1, and um, there's only one seat left to, left to declare, which is like St. Ives, because they're still trying to get a ballot box on a boat or something. Well, yeah, so they have floods and all sorts, and a couple of, you know, a couple of the, the polling stations this, they couldn't get the votes from. This is, this is one thing I think that has been done pretty well, is that this is middle of December, uh, and uh, I thought it was going to take longer. I thought there'd be results being declared kind of throughout the day because of all the cold and wet and well, not, normally in the summer elections, you don't wake up in the morning and, the, and the, you know, and they're all done. Exactly. Um, normally, it's, you know, it, it's it was very quick. Yeah. It was very quick. Um, but interestingly, so that we'll talk about turnout then. Turnout only down by one and a half percent on twenty seventeen. Okay, so turnout was still pretty high, sixty seven percent turnout um, of, and again, this is the this is the important stuff, isn't it? Of registered voters, of which there are forty seven and a half million registered voters and again that 47 million is worth holding in your head when you get to hear about the number of voters for individual 47 million registered voters yeah and how many people in the country something like 65 about, million. about 65 million but obviously you've got I would, have, I would have thought there were more children than that interesting but we can do a whole lot on demographics yeah. another another day um i joked to you about introducing this podcast didn't i saying that you know people were told um to not vote for um, the racist liars, and so they didn't. But we'll actually come on to the number of people that did vote for some pretty, pretty horrific things. If not policy, then the, the people and their uh, my kind of beliefs. Um, 
So the Conservatives have got 364 seats. That is an increase of 47. Labour have got 203. That is a loss of 59 seats. I mean, this is this is this is big. Well, so it's, this it's, is the worst performance since 1935 yeah, yeah. for Labour. You know, it's, Nearly 100. It, it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Uh, so the SNP have gained 13 seats, they're now on 48. And so this is very similar to 2010. Is it? Thing? Sorry, 2015, um, after, the, uh, after their referendum. Um, Lib Dems on 11 with minus one, um, maybe St Ives. This is where they might be net, net zero. Um, nothing... still, still two cars, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and the point was is that they got lots of defections. So the number of MPs... The, this number of seat change I'm talking about here is based on the 2017. Yeah, because the 25% of their MPs were defectors yeah. uh, uh, you know, a couple of days ago. Exactly. Um, nothing for the Brexit party. One green. Caroline Lucas again in Brighton. And I'm not, I won't go into all of the other, the, you know, the minor parties, the Northern Ireland parties and stuff like that. Although there are some kind of notable mentions later. So no net change on green number of seats either. So the vote share, Conservatives, 45%. So it was at the top end of the polls, wasn't it? You know, the, the polls were showing a 10% difference between uh, Conservatives and Labour. Well, that, on that, average, that final, sometimes it shrank a bit. That, that final salvation poll that was accurate in 2017 was actually pretty accurate because that said like 44%. Or it, exactly. 45%, so that was... But 45% was kind of the high watermark, wasn't it, in the polls? When you thought, oh, 45, 45, it's going as high as 45. It, would, it was, could easily have been as low as 40, even if the, the difference between the, the two parties was still roughly 10%. They only increased their vote share, the Conservatives, by 1%. Their vote share is a number of votes, but obviously the Labour vote share plummeted. So they got 33%, which is a, a net reduction of 8%. This is the implosion of the Labour vote. Now, obviously, there are all these swings towards the Conservatives, but it's just to highlight that it's complicated. We, we, we talked before about this being um, an election that was based on the marginals, it was based on tactical voting, it was based on what happened when people decided to vote for the Lib Dems or Brexit Party or not. Um, these are fascinating numbers, I think. Tactical voting, though, how well did that work out for them? Oh, tell me about it. I mean, it's, uh, it's, 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 tactical voting, it sounds, it sounds easy, but it's actually a bit more complicated because you've, got, difficult. Because you've got some people who are saying uh, you know, you need to vote for the Lib Dems in this constituency because in the 2017 election they were the closest party. Yeah. And then you've got some polls that are saying that Labour are in the lead. So you've got some tactical voting websites saying we must tactically vote against the Tories, vote for Labour. Yeah. And in the same constituency you've got other tactical voting sites saying the same thing, but we must vote for the Lib Dems. Yep. And they just cancel each other out. Yep. It's, um, but okay, so this, this net to zero or maybe minus one for the Lib Dems, okay, that's on a vote share of 12%, okay. okay? So 45% Tory, 33% Labour, 12% Lib Dems. And you know, the 11 seats are missing in relevance, isn't it? That's an increase in their vote share of 4%. So when you start going, okay, how did the Tories get there or their seats? There was a swing from Labour to the Lib Dems, which actually we'd all been predicting, hadn't we? You know, we've been predicting that yeah. people would find it toxic to vote Labour, and so they'd vote Lib Dem. They also, the, the, I'm sure a lot of those are proper Remainists as well. But I'm sure that I'm sure a small percentage of those were Remainer Tories as well that went to the Lib Dems. Yes. So it's it's, right. it's difficult to say where the swing is because people are saying, "Oh yeah, the Brexit Party is taking votes from Labour." And Conservatives as well. Presumably. All of the so-called centrists of the Conservative Party that got ousted, the 21, 22 that got, you know, sacked from the Parliamentary Party and everything, you know, their votes, the people that would have voted them in normally would have gone somewhere. Um, Brexit Party got 2% of the vote share. Greens got um, 3% of the vote share and up by one. Greens made a, a gain of 1%. Well, well some, didn't they have something like on their, of their own vote share? They had a, I think they had about a sixty percent increase. Really? Yeah. On the on what you mean at um, 
in Caroline Lucas's constituency, or no? I mean, I mean in, in well, sure. yes. I mean, we've gone from we've gone from two to three percent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fifty percent increase, but it's, yeah. it's just a, it's, it's like sixty percent, I think. So they, right, okay. It's hard to spin that as doing well. <laughs> exactly. A um, couple of little other facts for you: um, number of women in the party. Oh, okay. So um, the Labour Party, uh, the Labour Parliamentary Party, is now majority women. Really, one hundred and four women versus ninety-eight men. I think that's really interesting. Um, uh, I, the, the Lib Dems are also majority women, but that's it's far easier to get a majority when there's only eleven of you. So seven versus four. Um, and obviously, Joe Swinson is, is not included in that. No. I, was she included anyway? Because of this, you know, she didn't believe in biology. Um, that, yeah, whatever. SNP have only got 16 women and 32 men. So they're not, anyway, 50%. Uh, and the Conservatives, as you would expect, 87 women, 277 men. But I just think that's, that is interesting demographics. And I must admit, I want to get into the demographics of the actual votes. I want to understand. Because, you know, this is... The working class voting for conservatives. This is leavers voting for conservatives. This is people who don't like anti-Semitism voting for conservatives. All of that. So we'll, we'll but I want to know where the young are, where the old are, all of this. Will Will Labour finally manage to get in a female leader? That's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. Maybe we'll come on to that in a second. Uh, I want to very quickly rattle down the numbers of votes. Okay, so you had the vote share. But I think when you actually put numbers to it, I mean, OK, fine. We've been saying for a while, 33 percent, a third of the country polled. And now it's official um, of the OK, it's not quite that simple. And this is where Remainists always like to do this about the Brexit referendum. Don't they count the actual number of people versus the number of people in the country and all that nonsense. But putting that aside, 33 percent still thought it was OK to have a, you know, an anti-Semitic, racist, um, you know, terrorist, Islamic communist in, uh, in power. That translates to 10 point, nearly 10.3 million people. 10 million people. Just let that sink in. The Conservative votes were just shy of 14 million, 13.94 million. But 10 million people either just vote Labour because they wouldn't, they, they, do, they don't care what their policies are, I am Labour, so I vote for it. Or in the hierarchy thing, we've talked about this before, about does democracy trump Brexit and stuff like that. Whatever policies they voted for, they all trumped racism in a big way. It wasn't a, a red line for them. <laughs> How could it not be? I saw um, Julia Hartley Brewer um, tweeted a couple of days ago saying, if the only Brexit supporting party, the only one capable of getting a Brexit deal, was run by an anti Semite, I wouldn't vote for them. It's not, yeah, it's, it, it trumps a lot of things. But that, that shouldn't be an extreme view. It really shouldn't. Tell that to 10.2 million people. But how, so how many red lines? I mean, so, so, you know, you've got racism, which should be a red line. And yeah. you've got the fact that they've just got the most economically illiterate, immoral manifesto. I mean, you'd hope that, aside from the racism, you'd have hoped that communism would be a red line for people. But apparently it isn't. Yep. Well, but John McDonald described it as centre-left last night. Yeah, he's such it a was, moron. Right, yeah, but this was about quarter past ten, so the, you know, the exit poll's got... He, he, he's just had the exit poll. And Andrew Neil interviews him on the BBC. I broke my BBC fast even to get these stats and to watch the, watch the coverage. And it looked like he'd just been punched in the stomach. John McDonnell. John McDonnell is the scary one, but he's also scary because he's smooth. He's calm. And he's clever. Very, he's clever. He's a very clever chap. Absolutely. Um, uh, and he, he, he's a very clear communicator. And there was just something about the look on his face and the way he was answering that made you go, this is real, this is happening. And he doesn't understand, he doesn't believe that it's all over. The, the hard left like this kind of slow march thing, don't they? They like the chip away. They, they, they play the long game. They're quite happy to play the long game. Well, they've been playing for 40 years, haven't they? Exactly. And so for him, if this was 
uh, yeah, if this was Hong Parliament territory, if this was, even if it, even if it wasn't a, a, a Labour majority, we, we'd chalk up as a win, we'll do better next time, we'll get a bit more, get a bit more, get a bit more. This was bang, stopped, done, gone. So I, 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 think, I think he was, he was possibly hoping that there would be, so I, I think he has aspirations for leader. I think he thinks he can Not do anymore. a better job than Corbyn. And he was hoping for perhaps a small reduction in the Labour number of seats, just enough that Corbyn would have to resign, but that he could come in as leader and he wouldn't have a, a, an spot. overwhelming job to do. Yeah. Whereas now, that's it. What, what can he it's do? all over. It's all over. Um, it, it really is all over. And, and I'm saying that in, in political terms, it's ten, all over. 10 million people, though, still vote for communists, so is it over? Well, I, I think um, that the Labour Party isn't going to implode. I think that momentum have got their claws in. I think that um, they're going to point to this 10 million. They're going to not let the next leader be in any way any kind of moderate. Obviously, Keir Starmer won. He'll lose because momentum will not vote for a Keir Starmer. So they're going to get someone else. Maybe your chap, Bergen. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> Would you pay three pounds? I don't, I don't, know. I don't know if I'll pay three Forget pounds. Forget principles. So. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. So, 10 million people. That, Actually, on that, on that note, maybe, maybe that three pounds was worth it. Finally, I mean, it's taken years. <laughs> no, only four years. <laughs> this is what I was playing for. This is what the I was long playing game. for. Long, the long game. Playing with their own game. The long game, yeah. Um, Lib Dems, 3.6 million votes. Uh, the Brexit Party, 642,000 votes. Green Party, 864,000 votes. So they're quite similar in their terms of their number of votes there. The Independent Group, 10,006 votes. Wow. <laughs> UKIP, 22,817 votes. So they, they had half the vote of Less UKIP, than half. Who, who basically imploded. Hold that 10,000 figure in your head again. Who, who got more than that? And what, yeah, I'm, I'm again, I'm not including the Northern Irish parties here because it's just, it's so different over there. The Liberal Party. You heard of the Liberal Party? Not the Liberal Democrats. Um, the, Liberal, the Liberal Party, there still exists. Okay. Just like, you know, we joke about the, the, you know, the official Communist Party and we joke about the Socialist Workers Party and all these kind of things. They, they, they feel candidates. The Monster Aiding Levy Party feels candidates. The Liberal Party got 10,562 votes. The Liberal Party that you and I are blinking about got more than the independent group. <laughs> well, so in, in, our, I love that. in our constituency of North West Cambridgeshire, Charlotte Rara, um, I mean, it's, it's say increased his vote share by 4%. But he had, didn't, didn't he have like something like 45,000 votes? I don't know the numbers. All I know is it's about 65% majority. I, th I, think, majority. I think he had 45,000 people vote. So he had more people vote for him in his constituency. Yes. Four times the... the basically of the, all of those added up. Yeah. The UKIP, the Independent Group and the Liberal Party. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, interesting numbers. Mm. Interesting numbers. And then I was, I, was, I was fully prepared for this to just be spouting the numbers uh, saying what they are but actually you can start looking at, at these things apparently all 18 members of parliament who defected lost their seats as well didn't they all of them is, is that page <laughs> <laughs> i don't have a list of all of all 18 um my understanding is that anyone who defected um is, is gone yeah is, is absolutely gone and I, I so i didn't want to make this podcast about gloating yeah when you read these names off how could you not? I'm going to well, have to gloat a little bit. A little bit. Okay, so I've got a couple of different lists, lists here. Um, generally speaking, this is the left and then um, the uh, uh, the defectors. Okay. Um, this is my Portillo list. I've got a Okay, list. yeah. The Port Portillo list. Um, for those who don't understand, this is a Portillo moment is where uh, someone who you think is going to win actually loses now again this doesn't strictly work actually it does for some of these at the top it doesn't for the for the for the ones who've defected because we all thought they were going to lose yeah the patilla moments are the shock ones it's like when ed balls lost his seat 
Um, although, although he was he was in a margin. Again, he was on a so margin. So he wasn't really a Portillo. But it, there, Joe Swinson. But there, there's, there should be another number for big beasts. Who, yes. Who, who lose. Joe Swinson, top of this list. By Future a, Prime Minister Joe Swinson. Debate her, debate her. By 149 votes. Was it it close? was close. It was really close. Wow. Um, but she, uh, she's just, she's basically not been heard of since. <laughs> she's, she, she's resigned. Ed Davey and some member of the House of Lords are now joint co-leaders uh, while they have an election. Uh, she's gone. Uh, Nigel Dodds of the DUP, I've written down here, he lost his seat. Oh, I didn't realise that. The DUP lost seats, which is interesting. Is it because they worked for the Tories? Whatever. That some new parts of the Alliance Party in Northern Ireland has won a seat. Yeah, okay. it's, for the first time, there's a majority of nationalists, not unionists, in Northern Ireland. I mean, we, could, we, we probably should do our homework and do a podcast on Northern Ireland at some point. Laura Pidcock. So, so which which constituency is she? She's she's is it Durham? I, I don't know. So I think I think she's Durham or, or you know one one of the Durham um, yeah uh, constituencies. This is part of the the Red Wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's interesting about that is there's like an annual miners um, sort of union event every year. Right. And that's going to be in a Conservative constituency for the first time ever. Fantastic. That's, that's incredible, isn't it? Fantastic. It's yeah. like, it's like um, what was the, uh, the first one, to, or one of the first ones to be announced was, um, was Blythe, wasn't it? Yep. And, you know, I mean, and I haven't got these stats of, you know, it's been a hundred years since this has been Tory. But, but there, there the, are those. Just these areas. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that was a yeah. massive shock. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, oh, yeah. in the North East. Well, I, I tweeted, I tweeted a, uh, a picture of the electoral map. This isn't the one with the equal size constituents. It's just the map. And I just entitled it Blue Britain. Well, have you seen the, the map of the swings as well? The Telegraph have posted it. Yes, I have. The swings. That's incredible. Yeah, that's 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 big. Uh, Emma Dent Code gone. Okay, then the last she'd gone. Yeah, uh, Antoinette Sandbach. Okay, gone. <laughs> Dennis Skinner. I know the Beast of Bolsover. That's a biggie. So he's he had, had a, that seat for about fifty years. Yeah, it's like seventy-two, I think. He had a majority, he was defending majority of about, about 5,000, he lost by 5,000. Mm. That's a swing of 10,000 votes. It's just, it's just crazy. Um, Chris Williamson. He lost his deposit. He lost his deposit! He's the only one I know on this list that lost his deposit. But, scary guy. Oh yeah. Scary, scary guy. But, you know, a regular fixture on the TV, on the BBC, uh, spouting this stuff. But um, it just goes to show in lots of these constituencies, they're not voting for the person, they're voting totally, for the party. Totally. They're, they're voting for they're voting for you know for, for Labour. It's like it's yeah. like a, there, there are constituencies where people vote for you know, and you tend to think of like like your Islingtons and your Tottenham's, you know, like you, it, it, these kind of areas will just vote for a, a donkey and a red rosette. Yeah. And then you've got constituencies like Clacton, His name's Jeremy. <laughs> like Clacton. For Douglas Carswell, yeah. who he had, he had, he had. Um, he worked hard. He had a, a, a marginal seat. Worked, yeah. worked hard to get it to like a ten thousand majority. Held a by-election, and they loved him. They just voted yeah. for him. They were voting for him, not for not for you. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, so I've written down Caroline Flint here, who's know, lost her seat. She, so her speech was quite admirable. Um, I, I, I genuinely feel sorry for her. She was one of those soft Brexity people. Who then got real? Yeah, yeah. And um, and you know whatever you thought of her was at times a minister or whatever. Um, she was she was as Labour politicians go. She was reasonable um, and a pragmatist, and uh, she got punished for it. Um, there are there are obviously others. Labour have lost loads of seats. Um, but now I want to move on to my other list. Well, so I, I always had like a mental list in my head about Labour politicians who, who you wanted to leave. Or although, well, I know, although, although you didn't, although you probably didn't, you know, agree with their politics, you tended to yeah. think if this lot were in charge, it wouldn't be quite so bad. You oh, know, like your Tom Harris's and, and, and these people. Absolutely. And she was definitely on that list. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then we get to Chuka Ramuna. <sighs> Hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. I mean, he'll always have the award. He'll always have the Chukaramuda Award, um, but 
What's going to become of him now? I'm, I mean, I mean. So, are there any other parties that he's <laughs> he could join? That he could join? The SDP. Yes, I mean, yes. You know, because they're coming back. Just to rattle through them quickly, Anna Subri. Hilarious. Luciana Berger. Mm. And this is someone who, on the principle of anti Semitism, left the party, left Labour, and was punished for it. It's uh, coming but, back to what you're saying. But also, but I, say, I think, so she left the Labour Party because of anti Semitism, which was horrible. But then she joined the Labour Party. But Dems. she joined, well, actually, no, she joined Change UK. Yeah, but all of it, they, they're all scarred with this remain. change independent group remain yeah all, all of that nonsense. yeah so you had you had a bunch of labor mps who left because of anti-semitism which is admirable but then they joined parties like the lib dems and change and that's what did them in sam guyama yes so a defector from well i don't you see i don't think you can call him a defector he got kicked out of the tory party and so no, went no, and joined. These, these aren't defectors no um, well yeah. luciana berger was but yeah, yeah. people like that um yeah, he's gone. Oh well. And um, th there are others, but I've, I've saved my favourites until last. So there are certain people like Oliver Letwin that weren't standing again. And so they didn't care about what they were doing at the end of their tenure because they knew they weren't standing again. Oh, I know who this is going to be. I thought it was going to be Subri, but I know. I know. The only reason I've left him till last is because I also know the stat for him as well. So yeah, Anna Subri, I mean, we're very glad she's gone. Dominic Grieve. David Gork has gone, by the way, as well, but yeah. Dominic Grieve lost by 16,000 votes. Wow. <laughs> so, yay, the people in his constituency. So, what were the. Do you know the numbers? That's, that's, that's all I know. That's all I, know. I, don't, I don't have time to get. Well, you know, think about all of these. That's huge. If you yeah. think that some people only win by having 16,000 votes. Uh, totally. Did you, uh, did you, did you see, we were going to, I was going to talk about this in one of our previous ones and I forgot. Did you see his video to camera that he tweeted, um, Dominic Grieve, where he was advocating for a hung parliament? It no. was, it, it basically had, he had, this was around those few days before where certain people on, on, on t'other side, whether you're former Tories or on the Labour side or the Lib Dems, were basically acknowledging it's going to be a Tory majority, so let's see what we can do to try and reduce it. And he was out there saying, no, no the, the hung parliament is a perfectly desirable, reasonable outcome for us to be able to do things and this and that. He, he, he was arguing specifically for a hung parliament because he thought that'd be good. And it's, I know we joke about the hung parliament being good, not for the same reasons as him. Well, no, so he, he wants, a he hung wants to stop Brexit, that's yeah. it, that's it. That's all he wants to do. Yeah, whereas I want to stop everything. <laughs> that's, that's why I think the Parliament is, is good. Um, that's that's all the stats I've got. That's all the stats I've got, but they're they're pretty good ones. Um, it's been an out. Um, I only said Tony Blair. There's a Freudian slip for you. Boris Johnson announced that we are going to leave by uh, the end of January. We're going to going to get Brexit done by the end of January. Um, there's talk of uh, Parliament sitting next week and getting the withdrawal agreement yeah, bill, that. working on a Saturday, then having a you know a bit of a break over Christmas, so they're re ready to go um, for the new year, so that it gets done and out of the way. Um, so we might actually leave the EU, and if he is to be believed with his other commitments for the transition period. And it, what I find really amusing is that the transition period was supposed to kick in last March and run for basically two years. And the EU didn't reset it. It's not two years from the moment. They, they kept that date, albeit it's a date that within the withdrawal agreement, can, it can be agreed to be extended, but only both sides agree. Um, and Boris doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to extend that. So. He's now saying we, we, you know, we, we end transition at the end of 2020, which is basically a year from now. Most people are saying can't possibly negotiate a trade deal in that time. Fine. Albeit uh, Donald Trump and Boris Johnson are both saying they can. This is going to be an interesting year. Now, I, mean, I, just, I popped into my office this morning uh, and what the message I wanted to get across to the staff 
other than our industry is alive we work in telecoms so you know we're not about to go under um, but but also the fact that actually our company has been doing about as well as the British economy for the last three years we've been bumbling a lot of bit a little bit of growth but nothing major nothing stratospheric and it's all been political uncertainty it's all been since the EU referendum and then nonsense general elections and hung parliaments and not leaving and etc 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 I really believe there is a pent-up demand in the economy and it's going to be released whether it happens immediately after Christmas whether it happens uh, after uh, the 31st of January as you leave the EU um, people are going to start buying stuff again uh, and we've been having to work really hard to market and PR and get our mess together and find deals uh, and, we're, and we're absolutely fine but it's just there's not, not, not huge growth but I think now decisions can be we literally have people saying to us uh, but they're saying to us in October I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy this until Brexit's out of the way people are telling us that and it's gonna all have all have, all have been done so there's demand there I actually see the UK economy climbing again uh, because there's certainty even if it's not what big banks wanted or big business wanted leaving and no customs union all this kind of it's stuff un it's un certainty uncertainty kills everything um, in, in, in the market it, you know it would be better for the market if a bad decision was made rather than indecision right? exactly and we've had a, the whole of the whole of 2018 and 2019 basically been in decision haven't I um, well for the first time for the first time since well forever I've, I'm, I'm kind of, it kind of seems like Brexit is going to happen because I, I, yes. I, I never thought we were going to win I never thought Article 50 was going to get triggered you were in the Rod Little School of Thought and I was thinking you, they were just they're gonna, never going to let it happen yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and for the first time maybe yeah maybe it will actually happen yeah so what do you think about this idea that this is the big realignment in politics or the start of it because there have been there have been a load of these squishy centrists removed um the, the, again the, the 20 from the Tory the Tories party are all squishy centrists there were the really bad ones though. so we've got we've got rid of some of the bad ones but the, you look at the Tory manifesto that is textbook centrism um, I can't think of any I can't think of any real libertarians or or even you know or, or real right wingers in in the, in the party yep um, so no I don't really think it's it's uh, in alignment I think I think the the centrists have now they were probably split between Labour and Conservatives and now a few of them have moved yep. from what w was a centre left party to a centre right but it's still the centre you know the actual the the broadness of this it's debate like isn't um isn't that great but is it right but is it alicartism that's one here again oh it's, i see where you're going yeah but this is right well okay and i i i, I that's, all, that's all centrism kind of is uh, at the moment i think yeah you know. whereas they had a choice for proper left um uh they, they've chosen for a bit of left a bit of right um, i mean there's been no proper right-wing party no for, for, for decades or until 2015 there wasn't really a proper left-wing party either there was sort of center left and center right and now we've got center right and left right what there's a group though and i don't like using just the term the establishment and all this kind of stuff but there there has been some kind of changing of the guard here and it has been because of um the brexit referendum those 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 people though the john majors the tony blairs I mean, obviously they have they have gone from politics but then they came back to fight this yeah your michael hessel times are saying go out and vote live them but likewise your chukra moonas your the, the bright young hopes of the two main parties chukra moon was once touted as a future leader of the labor party let alone um david miliband who you know bugged off to the states um and um uh what's his name uh rory stewart you know these people who were seen as being the kind of leading center lights they're all gone the going back to what you said about are we actually going to leave it leave has now properly won <laughs> it, it it's now won in parliamentary party terms hasn't it you know all of the mps of the conservative party have signed up to this deal it's arguably what should have happened 
when there was a deal in the first place, and it's you know, because of the fixed term parliament, that it couldn't happen. He, this, yeah, but this should have happened in 2017. Exactly. It was an awful manifesto. Exactly. Um, exactly. Thank you, Nick Timothy. <gasps> Did Nick Timothy win? I don't know this. He ran, didn't he? Yeah, I'm not sure. That's something we need to find out. Is Nick Timothy now? Uh, but I, so, do, do you think, think this is a big change? People like Chickalmona and, and I, know, who, who replaced them? Just other squishy centrists. I'm not saying it's not um, it's not centrism in a big way, or, or this yeah this mix this anarchism kind of approach. But there's something about the Remainists more specifically. I mean, it's, it's been so more it's, of a clear out. Yeah. So the, the, there's been we had majority Remain MPs. Yeah. So that, but that, that's the difference. So it's been it's been centrists who voted Remain have been replaced with centrists who are willing to accept Brexit. But they but that's that's big, isn't it? I mean, we're talking about Brexit. That Brexit derangement syndrome is like it's a thing. You know that the. the the, the revokers, the Remainists, the ones that were going to do anything, the, the griefs of, of this world, they have been roundly marched out by the electorate, haven't they? I don't, I don't think it, I think it's been, I don't think it should be a big thing though. Leaving the European Union shouldn't be a big thing. No, no, but it was. People shouldn't it really was. notice the difference. But it was. So I'm saying I think the, that's, that, I think it's a pretty big thing. I think, I think that, um, that, Anyone who says that this is the Conservative Party going back to being right wing and Thatcherite and all this, I think it's utter nonsense. Um, Boris Johnson is, a, is, a, is I, I heard him say in his uh, CCHQ speech um, uh, that someone recorded, um, he talked about the perfect symmetry. He used the term perfect symmetry when talking about the public sector and the private sector. I, I seriously believe that he wants it to be a 50-50 split. That that's where he, th he... His model of centrism is absolutely right down the middle, of in terms of GDP terms at least, of 50-50. Uh, and it was the fact that it, 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 he said it again. Uh, it, just, it just made me think, oh, this, this isn't... We already knew it, but this isn't going back down to... 40%, 35%, 30% maybe. So do you, if you think Brexit is such a big deal, do you think that you're going to notice a massive difference with anything with this huge changing of the guard? Because I don't think anyone will. Uh, that, which is why I don't think it's a big thing. I think right. still, we're still going to have, you know, you, you're kind of middle of the road politicians who, who have, want a mixture I agree. of the public sector and, and the private sector. But don't you think that there's just a number, that there's just a looniness has gone from... From Parliament in a big way. Yeah, but it's probably just going to be replaced by another looniness. I'm I'm skeptical that much is that not much is going to change. Yeah, that, that that's where I'm coming from. You know, there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's always there's been talk recently about how the country is swinging to the far right and all this kind not of stuff. Not that's a Yeah, but I, I think the kind of the Brexit derangement syndrome is kind of the same thing. I think we're just going to get other useless politicians, um, and we're not. But it might take some time. It might take. Some, do you not not think that's maybe a five ten year? thing that might build up rather than it's all going to happen and you know soon you know, the, the, the remainers now don't have anything to talk about do they certainly won't very soon yeah i think they're still i, I, think I suppose they're... they came out of nowhere i suppose yeah. you know this, this 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 did all happen very quickly this little three-year period has been a kind of spasm in uk politics hasn't it it's been it's been a blip i think so i think the that referendum has caused uh, a realignment in politicians with the electorate because you know they were saying oh yeah we don't it's taken we don't, three years for it to happen we don't we don't need a, an eu referendum nobody's worried about it we have one and suddenly it's the largest vote that britain has ever seen yes and it's completely different from the from the makeup from, of the commons the makeup of, of the house of parliament um, and it took two goes to get the commons to reflect yeah and now country. and now they're you know they, 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 they kind of more reflect the country but it's still only it's still only one issue. I don't think it's going to be that much difference. We're still going to have all the awful regulation the EU gave us. We're just going to be able to in the future. We're going to be able to make our own trade deals, which is good, and and we're not going to have them impose law, laws on us, which is good. Yeah. But we're still going to have idiots making laws. It's going to be idiots in Westminster, not and, idiots in Brussels. And socialism is still winning. Of course, it is it's still on the rise. And right, the other thing I want to say is um, uh, the Greens have won. They've got. One seat, they've got 3% of the vote, but 
the Green Movement has completely and utterly won this election. Well, so Do you agree with that? Um, I, I, I like to compare this with like kind of Farage and Brexit in that he's never really had any power. But he's done a lot for the Brexit cause. Completely, very um, influential. And it's the same. It's the same with the. I, I, I don't. I guess the difference is I don't really. Um, I don't think it's the Greens who, although they're. Causes, I'm, saying, I'm not saying the Green Party. That's yeah. That we need to make that very clear because the Green Party is useless. But you know, your Greta Thunbergs and, and these people, the Green Movement, yeah, has won. Yes, um, and that started the moment that David Cameron decided to go and you know hug a husky or whatever, didn't it? Um, and adopt some of that stuff and then suddenly it became vogue to do it and now they all do it and the, the public sector is one yes you know everybody's talking about spending more money in the nhs in education in infrastructure and everything and this is what i mean by the social social yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it's the the socialized parts of the economy um and i've always said to you, i'll take as much time as you need for me to explain to you why that doesn't work um because it is accepted that these things are socialized um but, uh, but those are those are the winners. Um, but I think that's enough for our special election day special, or day after the election day special, results day. Not a communist day. There is still some good news, uh, but there's a long way to go for it not to become the least worst. You got anything else you want to add? No, no, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination of feeling relief that we're not waking up under a communist. Yeah. But with you know we're we're not. I, I want to get smaller government, um, yeah. and it's just increased again. So it's like a bittersweet. Um, it is, it is. The know. bittersweet is the best way of summing this up. I think it's um, not as bad as it could have been. So let's let's celebrate that. I think least worst, least worst territory. Yeah, um, we'll hopefully going to be back. Not talking so much about the political side of things because it has dominated, hasn't it, over the last few months. Uh, and we're going to get back to actually talking about free market stuff again and free speech and free trade uh, and all that jazz. So until then, thank you for listening to and watching. If you're on YouTube, Sounding Board, you can go to soundingboard.com uh, to uh, go and subscribe to us or on your favourite podcast uh, provider. Uh, please subscribe to us on YouTube, share our stuff. Uh, see you next time.